Hello learners from around the world and welcome to this live session of All You Can Learn. This is the first episode of the series by EIT Food that will take you on a learning journey in food, food innovation and sustainability. I'm John Paul Judson, delighted to be your host today as we explore the course on nutrition for health and sustainability. This course has been developed by educators from the University of Reading, University of Turin, University of Hoffenheim, University of Groningen, IMDEA Food Institute and the Spanish National Research Council in collaboration with experts from the Harvard Medical School and the International Federation of Medical Students. We are all faced with dietary choices and practices that not only affect our health and daily lives, but also have an impact on the environment. And clearly this topic is of major interest as we have received over 500 registrations with people attending from over 80 different countries. And it's great to see already the diversity of cities from around the world that you are joining us from. We have a little hub in Madrid, a few hubs in the UK with Warwick, uh, Leicester. We have people coming from Sweden in Lund. So hello to you in Hasselt. Uh, also in Belgium, welcome to all of you in Warsaw. Uh, Rennes in France and keep keep telling us where you're coming from. You can do that in the Slido tab uh, just next to the uh, Q&A tab. In addition to the topic and the presentation of the course, today is also an opportunity to reflect about the value of learning and online courses. And we can see the split in the audience between those who have already taken online courses and those who haven't. And hopefully today we'll, we will be convincing the 53% to take the jump and the 47% to pursue their learning journey. When it comes to the specific online courses provided by EIT Food, we see that close to 15% have already taken part. So it means that for a big majority of you, this may be the first time you interact with EIT Food and its various options for e-learning. In terms of housekeeping, we'll be together for the next hour. The first half hour will be devoted to the presentation of the EIT Food Course on Nutrition for Health and Sustainability. And you can raise your questions in the Q&A tab to the right of the live stream. And of course, feel free to use the chat box to engage with other participants. After the Q&A, you will have time to visit the event platform in the expo area. You will find different booths where you can get information on the course and more general information on EIT food learning services. If we're not able to answer all your questions during the live session, we will make sure to follow up also by email afterwards. So if you're ready, let's get started. And I would like to invite Francesco Vizioli to join me on stage. He is Professor of Human Nutrition at the University of Padua and researcher at IMDEA Food in Madrid. Francesco, welcome. Thank you, thank you, Jean-Paul, and uh, welcome everyone to, to, this, uh, to this debate. It's not going to be a debate, but it's going to be a presentation of a very, very interesting and successful course. So thank you for joining. It's a dynamic presentation, I could, I could call it that way. So you are one of the course educators for this short course on nutrition for health and sustainability. And in the run up to this event, I challenged you to see whether you would be able to describe the course using three foods. Now, the that first food you chose was breast milk. Okay, can you tell us why you chose breast milk? This course is breast milk uh, because breast milk is the, is the most complete kind of food you can find. So we, uh, that was the first food we, 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 we all tasted and uh, it contains everything you need um, for, for, for child development. Fatty acids, including omega-3 fatty acids that are secreted by, produced and secreted by the mammary gland, it contains protein, it contains vitamins, for example, carotenoids, very important for visual development. Uh, what you need to hydrate your... So it contains everything you need to grow, and this course contains everything you need to learn about nutrition and sustainability. So in that sense, it's like breast milk, everything condensed in, in just one course. Okay, very nice. Indeed, I, I, I get that. So it's an all-in-one package, and you can really get nurtured on your learning journey through this course. The second food you chose was meat. Why meat? Why meat? Meat is a very controversial kind of food. 
It provides uh, important nutrients, uh, fat, um, uh, amino acids, protein of, of, of high biological value, but meat is the uh, paradigmatic example of uh, why you, you readers, you learners, will not be able to eat whatever you want in the future. Because meat, especially beef production, ruminant meat, all kinds of meat, animal protein in general, they're putting an enormous stress on the planet in terms of environment. So even though you like meat, even though meat provides important nutrients, we cannot eat as much meat as we want. Worldwide, I mean. So there's no reason to go vegetarian. Uh, if you want to, great. If you enjoy meat, do so, but in moderation. And meat, I think, is it's the best example of, of how we cannot uh, separate our health from the health of the planet. We need to uh, look at both of them concomitantly. Okay, so meat is a food that makes you think about what you're eating. Maybe we could, we could put it that way. The third food that you chose was, in fact, a glass of water. Why a glass of water? Well, this course is a glass of water because a glass of water is very easy to digest, right? So this course is... Uh, is uh, uh, we, we went in depth. Uh, you will learn a lot uh, from this course but in a very easy way. It's not difficult to follow the course. It's not difficult to learn important and updated uh, uh, notions, but it's very, very easy to digest. So don't be scared. Uh, uh, enjoy the course, uh, and, and, and you will learn a lot of things uh, without realizing it. Uh, it's not heavy. It's not, uh, it has a great taste. <laughs> and so water, to, to me, is, is a perfect example of how this course uh, uh, will, will be easy to digest and will leave you well hydrated. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I appreciate that you took on this challenge. It's, it's not always easy to link a food with learning, but I think it's very clear what images you were capturing there with the nurturing of the breast milk, with the easy to digest uh, water, and also the meat element, which makes you think. And mm. these courses are also important because they make you think. So if we go a little bit closer then to the actual course, could you just give us the headline as to why is this course important? I personally think this course is important because, as you said in the introduction, diet is the most important determinant of our health. It's not the only one, okay? So it's the whole lifestyle. It's genetics. It's good luck, bad luck. You can get sick uh, even even uh, if you if you follow a, a very healthy lifestyle. But you also need to exercise, sleep well, relax, have fun. Anyway, the most important thing you can do for your health is eat well. A healthy diet is, is been demonstrated is uh, the most important determinant of health. So what you will learn from this course is not only how to eat well, uh, but it is also to why the, the, the food we, we choose impacts on our health. At the end of the course, you will be able to, one, uh, design a proper diet, and two, tell your friends, your people, your family uh, to follow a healthy diet. Again, as I said, you do not need to uh, eliminate any kind of food, uh, probably, but you need to uh, balance a little bit the proportions of, of the food you eat. And so I think it's important to follow this course because at the end of the course, you will have an, a, an overall idea of how what you eat affects your health and the health of the planet. Okay, so it's, um, it's almost like a journey planner, uh, but for one's own uh, dietary needs and, and to understand what, it, what is required. Um, when the course was set up, uh, what were its main objectives? <laughs> yeah, the main objectives were to provide, and I'm going to, to say um, something apparently, it's a contradiction, it's an oxymoron, uh, an, uh, uh, an in-depth overview of diet. Why, why am I saying this? So it, it's an overview of, you will not become a specialist in just one, one course, uh, but you will get an overview uh, with in-depth notions of why and how the food you eat modifies your health, affects your health, can make you healthier or sicker, you and again, and the planet. You cannot disjoint your health from that of the planet. So the major challenge was to be scientifically strong, sound, the course is scientifically very sound, very updated. Uh, we put in the course the latest uh, um, results uh, from research worldwide. 
but we also try to cover all aspects of human nutrition and of planet health in a, uh, as i said in a simple easy to digest way so that was the major challenge and i think we made it because um, because people are really happy with the course uh, uh, they go through it uh, uh, easily or so they say and uh, and uh, the comments we receive uh, were really really positive people are really enthusiastic about the course uh, they they say they learned a lot and they uh, they gained a lot of knowledge on 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 diet in general on food on food items on food components and again on sustainability and planet health as a as a learner then uh, in, interested in potentially looking further at this course uh, can you can you tell me what would i get out of it. You mentioned uh, already some idea about the choices I might make. I might be a little bit more informed about the choices, but is it only about understanding one's own diet and what one needs to do? Or is there also a more general holistic overview of, you know, planetary health, uh, the dietary elements, uh, the science behind <clears throat> diets? What would I get out of it as a learner? Good point. Good point. So uh, you will not become a dietitian with just one course and uh, you will not heal yourself if you have dietary issues. If you do have dietary issues, go see your general practitioner, go see a, a, a registered dietitian. Uh, do not rely entirely on the course. But what you will get out of the course is, again, a, a huge and general understanding of why and how what you eat affects your health. So you will be able to modulate your health. I'm not saying this in a medical way. Again, if you have health issues, go see your physician, uh, your dietitian. You will not become a specialist overnight. Uh, it takes many, many years of uh, research, of studying, of frustration, of being rejected. Uh, so, so it's not just one course. But uh, again, you will have, uh, you will learn more or less everything you need to know on why and how diet affects your health. And, and also you will learn what you will eat in the future. Because as I said at the beginning with the example of meat, uh, meat is a typical uh, food that makes you think you cannot, eat, you cannot, you will not be able to eat as much meat as you, as you like. It's not me who's saying that, it's arithmetics. You are putting so much stress on the planet that you will not be able to, to eat as much uh, uh, animal protein as we wish. So again, we need to match uh, our health, our needs, our taste, our uh, preferences, food preferences, dietary preferences with planetary health. Uh, the two of them go together. And if we take care of our planet, our planet will take care of us. And if we take care of our diet, our diet will take care of our health, so to speak. How, um, how accessible uh, is, is this course? Because if, if I'm someone who doesn't really have a lot of background knowledge of this or, or initial uh, knowledge of this, am I able to just jump into the course and, and understand it? Or does it require some uh, prior information, prior knowledge? How, how, how have you dealt with that aspect? I'm glad you mentioned this because it took us many, many months of tweaking the course to make it as accessible as possible. Of course, if you have a background of biochemistry, it will be easier for you. If you, have, if you know some physiology, it will be easier for you. Uh, anatomy, maybe, uh, food chemistry, maybe, will help, but it's not mandatory. It's not necessary. The food is, uh, the, the course, I'm sorry, is accessible to anyone who's interested in learning about uh, diet and, and sustainability and health, of course, uh, from philosophers to engineers or any, anyone, anyone. Uh, again, it took us many, many months to fine tune the course and remove technical terms while uh, remaining scientifically very, very sound. So again, the course is fully accessible by anyone who wants to learn. If something is not clear, we are here to help. Uh, you, you can ask questions uh, and the educators uh, will, will answer or they already answered. If you look at the questions, uh, many of them are, have already been answered. So we are here to help, of course. And the course is fully accessible, easy to, easy to digest, as I said at the beginning. Uh, no problem if you don't have a scientific background. It's preferable, of course, to have a scientific background, but it's not indispensable. Okay, and uh, please, in the audience, do raise your questions uh, on the course uh, with Francesco. Also, more generally, on, on nutrition for health and sustainability. I'm sure Francesco will have some uh, good ideas to answer quite a few of your questions. So please raise those. 
I, I would have uh, one more question also to you in relation to cultural sensitivity. Um, you know, when we, when we talk about food, uh, we talk also about emotions and uh, culture. And I was struck by the number of registrations, for instance, for this event with people coming from, you know, more than 80 uh, different countries. Well, there will be traditions there that will be very different. Um, how do you apprehend this whole segment related to food when it comes to issues like nutrition for health and sustainability? Is it the same or is the science the same all across the world? Put it that way. It's probably the most important issue that, that they could have raised. Um, I keep repeating uh, my students and everyone, it's not pharmacology. What I mean by that? I mean that you have, if you have fever, uh, your physician will prescribe paracetamol or acetaminophen if you are in, in the United States. And paracetamol uh, is paracetamol in, in, in uh, France, in Spain, in Indonesia, in India, still the same molecule. Synthesize, you take 500 milligrams of paracetamol, boom. Well, more or less. If you have high cholesterol, you will take rosuvastatin, atorvastatin. And it's the same molecule in the United States, in the UK, in Russia, in Singapore, anywhere. Food is very, very different. We do not eat uh, for, just for energy. Otherwise, we will all be eating the same thing worldwide. We eat, as you say, for personal preferences. Some people like some things or, or they don't. Tradition, uh, I see a participant or more participants from, from Rennes. Uh, a Brezon egg, uh, and so they eat a lot of uh, they eat a lot of cheese, and we, which is great. They eat a lot of butter and cream. Uh, I, I love it, and they don't eat lots of butter and cheese and cream in, say, China. And again, uh, rosuvastatin is the same rosuvastatin in in, in Bretagne and, and in and in Shanghai, but the the way we eat is very different. And so we cannot, we cannot, and I'm talking to politicians, uh, we cannot jump into uh, people's life and tell them exactly what they should eat and what they should not eat. It takes many, many years of cultural education to tweak again, modify the diet. If you're used to eat a lot of meat, uh, I, I don't, I don't uh, hate meat, I eat meat, okay, I eat meat. But if you eat a lot of animal protein, you cannot, you will not be able to do so in the future, even if you love it because the, it's putting too much stress on the planet. So move toward more a plant-based diet without, uh, without modifying too much your, your habits, your traditions, your family tradition. Uh, tonight, if I'm not mistaken, is Pesach. If so, if you are Jewish, you celebrate Passover and you eat exactly the same meal. You cannot modify that meal and you should not modify that meal. So it's very important. Uh, it's, it's a huge question. This is also why it's so difficult to have people follow some, some sort of diet because they are not used to um, modify uh, what they eat. They used to take pills, which is great, but that's pharmacology. The effects of food on health depend on many, many, many other components, many, many other things. So what you're saying is that one can take part in this course and then reflect on some of its learnings in the context of one's own cultural uh, context, for instance. It's not necessarily that there is one uh, science quite like in pharmacology. OK, there's uh, one uh, question uh, here in the audience um, talking about the challenge of a uh, combination of foods, which is, uh, according, uh, according to our participant, you know, one, one of the biggest challenges. And, and she's asking, you know, how to work with that in terms of well-being and healing? And will the course cover aspects related to uh, food combinations? The course does cover the whole diet, meaning that you not eat just one kind of food. You, you, today or tomorrow, whenever, you do not eat just rice unless you are in a very poor country and only eat white rice, but that's, that's a different issue. So yes, we do cover the whole diet, composition, dietary composition. And again, as you said uh, one minute ago, it's very important that this course makes you reflect on your own habits, on your own dietary habits, on your traditions. I have, uh, I remember one question, the first run of the course, uh, this guy, some, someone, I think, I think he was a guy from, uh, I can't remember where, Middle East, but I'm not sure. But I mean, anyway, he said, hey, how dare you? You know, I, I, I'm used to eat uh, lamb or mutton. How dare you telling me? No, 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 no. We're not telling you anything. Any, keep, keep eating what you eat. Of course, uh, it's, it's necessary. But keep in mind that research is advancing. We are telling more and more. Uh, we are learning more and more on what food does on health. 
So maybe in the future, try to eat less of something and more of something else. Compose, design your diet around the plant-based uh, items. Add some uh, animal protein if you like them. If you do not like them, no problem. Uh, try again to work toward a healthier diet without jumping into extreme diets, which are which are really, really negative. They never work. They never work. Well, some people say, you know, I lost a lot of weight and regained them. Yeah, exactly. Because you went to an extreme. You need to learn slowly, slowly uh, what to prefer. Exactly. Not to exclude, but to prefer. So include more of some items and, and reduce more of other ones. Okay, brilliant. More questions coming in, uh, Francesco. So I hope, you're, I hope you're ready to take them on. Um, one uh, on precision nutrition. Uh, are we going to learn about precision nutrition on this course and how can we correlate precise nutrition to sustainability? Wow, big question. So big, so big that the American NIH uh, set precision nutrition as one of the, uh, their two or three, I can't remember, major goals for the media future. So precision nutrition is evolving rapidly and uh, I'll give you an example. I, I hope, I hope the, the audience is not bored by what I'm going to say. But let's say, uh, okay, coffee. Uh, here in Italy, it's uh, 6 p.m. Uh, I do not drink coffee afternoon. Zero. Why? Because otherwise I don't sleep. But if someone in the audience goes out tonight uh, to, to a restaurant, uh, and let's say there are 10 people, the waiter at the end comes and says, coffee, more or less one or two people raise their hand. Yeah, sure. So it's the same molecule, it's caffeine. Some people don't sleep, some people, what? No problem. Uh, hey, I eat a lot of pasta and I, get, uh, and I don't get fat. And my cousin uh, eats just a little bit of rice and look at him. Yeah, or her. Yeah, I know, it makes sense. So everyone responds differently fo to food. And uh, precision nutrition is, is not the future, it's already the present. Uh, I mentioned, uh, I mentioned uh, coffee, but the same thing applies to milk applies to oncological patients who need to eat some things and exclude other ones. So we all need to eat different things and not, 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 we, don't, we should not design a diet like a drug. Again, not, it's not a medicine, but some things uh, uh, we tolerate better than other ones. Everyone is different. We all have a genetic, different genetic compositions. And so we, yes, we do talk about precision nutrition and how to cope that with sustainability. That's a huge issue that's not resolved yet. But uh, sooner or later, we already have the tools. We just don't use them. We already have the tools to have genetic, uh, genetic uh, analysis and uh, to learn what uh, we should or eat or what we should reduce, for example. Uh, lactose intolerance is a typical example. Uh, if you tell, let's say, I'm, I'm, it's exa I'm exaggerating, it's an absurd example. But if you tell uh, all uh, 47 million Spaniards to, eat, to drink milk, uh, you cannot do that because many people are lactose intolerant. And the same thing applies to Asia. Oh, it's even worse. Uh, you cannot say, even if you discover that milk is magical or, or, or whatever, I'm, I'm making a, a, just, a, just a stupid example. You cannot tell people to drink lots of, lots of milk because some, some of them are lactose intolerant. The same thing applies to, again, coffee, alcohol, plenty of things. Probably not to a glass of water, though. Um, okay, um, great. There are more questions. So uh, does the course or will the course cover aspects related to absorption and bioavailability related to nutrient intake? <laughs> we touch upon that just a little bit because, again, we did not want to become too technical, too specific. But absorption by availability is, uh, is, is uh, okay, if I take one minute, okay, I'm, I'm going to give a short class on absorption and by availability. The typical example of vitamin is vitamin C. So vitamin C is, um, uh, how much vitamin C do you want to, should you eat? Okay, by availability is complete at 200 milligrams and cells, your cells saturate with only 100 milligrams. So it's, it's not necessary to eat huge doses of vitamin C. And that's another example of precision nutrition. Why? Because the elderly do not absorb vitamin C as well as uh, the younger ones. So if you are mm, 65 years old, I'm getting there, but if you are uh, 60, 65 years old, you should eat more vitamin C. Why? Because you don't absorb as much. And the same thing applies to vitamin B, for example. Or if you take drugs uh, such as the proton pump inhibitors because you have gastritis, that prevents the absorption of vitamin B. Um, so yeah, bioavailability is a huge issue. 
uh, I think it was the philosopher Feuerbach who said, uh, we are what we eat. You know, everyone says, no, no, we are not. We are not what we eat. We are what we absorb. We are what we metabolize. Uh, some people absorb more of, of polyphenols from fruit and vegetables. Some people absorb less. And so, again, we touch upon that. Uh, we did not want to become too technical, too specific. Uh, that would be matter for a, a, a whole course or, or bioavailability. But it's a, it's a major issue. It's a major issue. It changes with age. It changes with disease. It changes with uh, concomitant drug uh, th therapy. And so, that, yeah, that's, that's a, it's, it changes on, on, on with the food matrix. So let's say omega-3 fatty acids uh, are better absorbed if you eat fish than if you take capsules. Uh, plenty of things, plenty of, uh, plenty of uh, similar examples. Yeah, and, and, and I see the, the challenge to you know, play with the scopes because on the one hand, one can really zoom in to very specific issues, but then you lose a bit the big picture. And then if you're too much big picture, then uh, you, know, you might have learners saying, well, we want to learn about something very specific. So I, I imagine that that's quite a challenge. Um, and there's, again, one more question related to scope or what is covered in this course. Uh, and I think it's, uh, it also links to a bit of a general societal debate around processed foods or ultra processed foods. And we know that there's even possibly legislation going in this area to maybe limit mm. uh, ultra processed foods. Do we look at the challenges uh, related to uh, ultra processed foods with regard to health in this course? So this gives me a great opportunity um, because ultra-processed food is a buzzword. Uh, it, it's scientifically very poor. The whole concept of ultra-processed food, most people conflate ultra-processed food with, in, with junk food. No, 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 it's totally different. Uh, keep in mind that we eat much better than, say, 50 or 100 years ago. And that's in part, thanks, in part, not totally, but in part, thanks to the food industry. Canned food, for example, frozen food allows us to eat fresh vegetables uh, when not in season or uh, uh, sterilization, pasteurization. It's very, very important. So what the food industry did, make, uh, they, they made huge progress. So ultra processed food, uh, they're gaining traction, but scientifically it's a very poor, we, very weak notion. They do not really exist. It's a creation of one researcher and, 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 and great. I have great respect for him. But everyone now is attacking ultra processed food. And if you look at the list, meat, and again, I know, but a steak should be healthier than yogurt. But why? Because a steak is, is not processed at all. So if you eat a one kilogram steak, one kilogram beef, eh, the chorizo, you, you, that will should, according to, 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 the, to, to, the, to the ranking, that should be healthier than yogurt. Because yogurt maybe may, might have some, some sugar added. And so again, uh, there's a lot of uh, confusion on what ultra processed foods are, are not. Uh, lots of people hate uh, the food industry, which is, uh, which is, of course, it's not innocent. I'm not saying, I'm not saying the food industry, but uh, they did great things. I mean, uh, again, pasteurization, we can drink milk uh, uh, for many days. Thanks for past to pasteurization. Uh, orange juice uh, should be pasteurized. If uh, without, without that kind of treatment, without that kind of treatment, we will have molds all over the place. We will have contamination all over the place. We have toxins all over the place. So again, we should not go overboard. Uh, thanks to, uh, again, uh, the, the, the things can be a lot better and the food industry should work toward uh, the production and commercialization of, of, uh, of healthy foods. But again, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not the food industry that's making us uh, fat or, or, or sick. It's, it's that we eat too much, we eat uh, uh, too much sugar, fat, uh, salt. And for sure, we need to go back to a simpler kind of uh, uh, food profile. Our diet should be composed of, of simpler foods. But uh, just to attack uh, one kind of foods without any scientific uh, logic, uh, I, I, I don't like it. Personally, I don't like it. Keep your eyes open. Okay, and I suppose then this course will help you keep your eyes open. Um, you mentioned that it's probably not a good idea to go for extreme choices when it comes to food and diets. Um, there's a question in the audience related to intermittent fasting. So the participant is raising the issue that around them they see people in their environment you know, choosing to go for uh, specific forms of diets like intermittent fasting or uh, the keto um, diet. What, what's mm. your perspective on, on this and how does it impact uh, you know, our vision for food? 
I published an article a review on, on fasting uh, from religious to medical applications and uh, we also dwelled into intermittent fasting. It makes sense, it makes sense, intermittent fasting makes sense uh, because we've been trained to eat whenever we had uh, the opportunity. Refrigerators and supermarkets are relatively new, are really, really new. So we were trained to eat, yeah, sometimes we had food, sometimes we did not have. So again, it's becoming very popular, intermittent fasting, fasting in general. Uh, there are no scientific data. Uh, you, you mentioned ketogenic diet, all the experiments, all the research, all the trials with ketogenic diet failed. Uh, they didn't show any results. Maybe, 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 maybe it does work, but we do not have in 2023 any, any diet, kind of data. Intermittent fasting makes sense. Uh, lots of people feel better. So if you do feel better, go ahead. If you do not feel better, do not force yourself to do fasting or intermittent fasting because, again, we are in April 2023. There's not a single piece of data in the literature, in the scientific literature. It might be next year or, or, or next week. But uh, as of uh, beginning of April uh, 2023, there's nothing on intermittent fasting, fasting in general, keto diet, paleolithic diet, uh, nothing, zero. Uh, people tried. But uh, uh, as of today, there's nothing. So maybe, again, maybe the future makes sense. Intermittent fasting makes sense, uh, makes plenty, plenty of sense. But eh. okay, thanks. I mean, thanks for all these uh, great answers. Uh, there, there are plenty of questions coming in. So I'm also doing my best to to select some of them. Apologies if we're not able to cover all of them. Uh, we will continue a while with Francesco. Uh, because we have the event platform open for, for another uh, hour or so. So you, you will still be able to explore all the other parts of the platform. I think we can still take another eight minutes, uh, I think, with Francesco. So we'll do our best. Um, I have a question here, which I think is quite relevant because it, again, talks about scope, but more from a methodological perspective. Um, will this course take a public health approach uh, that is useful for different populations? Does it consider uh, differences between children uh, and, you know, different stages of development in life? Uh, how does the course deal with, with that? We do talk about different stages in life and public health. However, again, we debated uh, on, on, on this. Uh, this was a huge debate we had with educators. Uh, we're not politicians. Uh, we are not public health uh, authorities. So we thought about that, but uh, it was not our goal. The goal of the course is not to provide indication to the general public, uh, uh, regulatory indications, political indications. It's just to provide uh, a, an overview on the most recent research on diet and health and sustainability. From that, you can grab your own uh, your own view your own conclusions you can draw your own conclusion on what your own authorities should do to improve uh, the population of your nation uh, the, the, the health of your nation i'm sorry uh, it, it, but this again is a political uh, aspect that we did not want to enter into that it's uh, it's really complicated uh, finance is one thing economics is another thing uh, uh, politics, uh, as we all know, is another thing, and uh, not always, uh, not always the scientific evidence, even strong scientific evidence, translates into into health uh, uh, advice. Uh, think, think of smoke. How many years it took to ban uh, smoke inside bars, restaurants? Uh, it took many, many years. Why? Again, you need to balance public health, economy. Uh, it's, it's complicated. It's not, uh, it's not our forte. It's not our task. And so, again, you can draw your own conclusions. You can talk to your own politicians, but it's not, uh, it's not a public health course. Okay. Thanks for, the, thanks for the clarification. Another question, yet one more. Um, this one relates to cooking because food is one thing, but then you have different cooking methods that will you know, transform the food in a certain way. Does the course, uh, sorry, does the course teach you uh, how cooking methods impact <laughs> on food nutrients? Just, just a little bit. Again, we are not a cooking class. Uh, we not, do not provide cooking class. But yes, for sure, cooking transforms uh, food. Um, okay, that, that's what uh, the that's what the anthropologist Claude Levi Strauss, the greatest anthropologist who ever lived, called the culinary triangle. Every anything we eat is either raw, 
you eat a tomato, you eat a salad, you eat a, an apple, or fermented sauerkraut, kimchi, a miso, plenty of plenty of plenty of fermented food, or even 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 cheese is fermented, beer is fermented. Uh, well, maybe that's not the food, but the bread is fermented, and so either raw, fermented, or cooked, uh, or a mixture of all three of them from the raw, and that defines civilization. Uh, many many years ago, we only ate raw food. And then we discover and fermented food. And then we discover the fire, and we started to cook. Uh, at the beginning, just meat, uh, cereals. It, it took a little bit, a little bit longer because we needed uh, vessels to to um, to 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 cook, uh, let's say, uh, grains in general. So that took a while. But the discovery of fire changed a lot our physiology. For example, uh, three things happened when we discovered fire, and that's in the course also. The first one, we sterilized food, more or less. So if you cook meat on, on, a, on, on fire, uh, all the parasites, you kill all the parasites and makes food uh, uh, less uh, poisonous or, or, or not poisonous at all. Second one, it's more digestible, and that leaves out, uh, that frees metabolic energy to, to grow your brain, and um, our brain grew when we discover the food, uh, we discover fire, maybe because we cooked food, we cooked food with fire, and so that was easy to digest. Instead of wasting a lot of energy and time, metabolic time, bio, biochemical time, to digest food, we we invested that energy in our brain development. And three, some people say that was the birth of philosophy, because we by cooking uh, in front of a fire, we still do it uh, with, with with fire places in in our apartments. Uh, when you cook with fire, you start to chat with your neighbors, and then you exchange ideas, and then civilization progressed with uh, with fire. So yeah, cooking modified foods, uh, you not not always not always uh, for the worse. Uh, yes, it kills a lot of vitamins, it kills a lot of minerals, it kills polyphenols. But it also improves digestibility, flavor, taste. Uh, cooking, for example, cooking tomato with oil extracts lycopene, which is a very important carotenoid. So instead of eating raw tomato, you should you should uh, uh, extract. Uh, you should cook uh, tomato with uh, with oil because the it's um, um, lycopene is water is lipid soluble, so it will be extracted by the oil more easily by available. So again, cooking is a, is also a sign of civilization. Um, we we are the only animals who cooked uh, that 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 much. Uh, it's very it's very important for our culture. It's very important for our health also. So see it both both ways. It can destroy some nutrients, but it can also improve digestibility, taste, uh, social social uh, sharing of our food, conviviality. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so there are still quite a few questions on on scopes of what is in or what is not in the course. I think maybe some of those questions could be addressed either in the booths when you visit them in a, in a, in a few minutes or as a follow-up email. Uh, I'd like to take one more, which is a little bit more of a reflective uh, question, and it's a, a, a more of a personal, uh, inviting you to a more personal reflection. Um, do you think we have time to get to sustainability in nutrition, or will planetary events overtake us? <laughs> I think it's quite a, a <laughs> nicely phrased, a nicely phrased question uh, from, from the <clears throat> participant. So, yeah, have a go at that one. It's a bit doomy. It's a bit doom and gloom. But please, Francesco. Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> so either are we doomed or, or no? Seriously, I'm a researcher, so by by definition, I'm optimistic. I work very hard. Uh, uh, all biochemical researchers work very hard to improve the quality of life of people, health of people. In this case, with food, but then pharmacologists, surgeons, uh, uh, climate experts, uh, uh, all kind of people who work uh, uh, to do technical research or, or scientific research, we do that to improve the life, uh, the life of people. So I'm optimistic. I think we still have time. We need to act soon, uh, but it's not too late. I think we need to. That was the Marquise de Condorcet. We used to say that we are okay. There, there, are, there are two parties. One is Malthus, and the philosopher Malthus was saying that we uh, exploit all the resources we had, and sooner or later we will become extinguished because of that. Uh, we will vanish because we will burn all the resources we have on the planet. We are like animals. But that was, um, but, but I followed the line of thought of, of, of the Marquise de Condorcet, who was saying that the human beings are more intelligent. Than the, than the problem they, they create. So we, we, we are creating problems, 
we are so clever that we will solve the same problems we create. So I'm very optimistic. Uh, uh, not very optimistic. I'm, I'm a little, I'm slightly optimistic. I'm on, on the optimistic side, and I think uh, we still have time. We need to act fast. Uh, everyone has to act fast. And we, our politicians, our our, our industry, uh, everyone. We need to get together uh, with plans, credible plans, actionable plans, and we still have time to to match sustainability with uh, with uh, with our own health. The two of them again are really interlinked. We cannot uh, have have an unhealthy planet and and a healthy life. Uh, either one. Okay. Um, so, final question related to the course. Um, if you're able to reveal that, maybe you don't want to reveal that, but it's coming from the audience, and I'll give it a try. What is the most surprising fact or learning uh, that learners take away from this course? <laughs> I'm not supposed to reveal that, but I think uh, I think as a student of the course, I, I, I designed it. We designed it, and then we also followed it. I think maybe the most uh, the most important thing that they they will take away is how difficult, how important, and how difficult is nutrition research. Again, it's not pharmacology, which is super difficult. It's super difficult. But to demonstrate that simvastatin lowers blood cholesterol. It's easier than demonstrating that uh, that uh, kimchi or that couscous uh, improves uh, whatever metabolic syndrome. That's super complicated. So maybe the, maybe at the end of the course they will click. Hopefully they will like it. <laughs> they will say. Hopefully they will say, "Hey, that was a great course. Uh, I'm glad I, I I I followed it." And they also they, maybe they will get an idea on how difficult it is to get to the point we we are now. Uh, it takes many, many years of, of research, many years of funds, of frustration, of investments, of uh, being skeptical, of being rejected. Uh, and so, yeah, it takes time, takes time. All the notions we put in the course are the fruit of many decades of, of work, of hard work by, by people worldwide. OK, so they will be surprised about how much they will have learned. That, that is probably the most surprising thing they'll, uh, they'll get. OK, great. So. Before we wrap up, I would like to, first of all, really thank all the participants for their active engagement. I think we did our best. And Francesco, you, you were fantastic in answering so many questions in quick fire. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so we did our My best. Job. Um, do let us know in the Slido poll uh, if you think you might want to sign up for this course. Uh, you just visit Slido and uh, give us on a scale of 1 to 10, how likely do you think you are to sign up to the, to the online course? Uh, so please let us know. It's always good to get a bit of feedback. And before I say goodbye to Francesco, I'd like to just reflect with you uh, on actually learning itself. Okay, we've talked about the course, we've presented, you know, what's in, what's not in, and you've spoken about uh, nutrition for health and sustainability. Um, I'd like to get a sense from you, maybe a, a personal anecdote about something that's happened over your career as a learner, um, something that you were impressed by in your in your learning that maybe you could share with our audience today. Maybe rather than just one anecdote, because I will have many, many. I think the the lesson I learned is to be skeptical, not cynical, not cynical, but skeptical, meaning that sometimes we as researchers believe in our theory, we fall in love with our theory, and then we're wrong, and you need to admit you're wrong. And you need to admit that antioxidants uh, that were supposed to save the world, the free radical theory, they fail. And you need to admit that HDL, the good cholesterol, you increase it, increase it, increase it, and then you increase mortality as well. But why? It's more complicated than that. So being skeptical, uh, maybe it's the lesson I learned, do not, I don't believe my own data and I replicate, replicate, replicate. I discuss with experts. I, I learned from... I learn from failure. I try to learn from failure, and I had many, many rejections, many failures. But if you just, uh, but if you just keep doing the same mistake, you will get the same result. I think that was Einstein who said that. So I, I apologize for for quoting Einstein. But he said, you know, if you if you if you keep repeating the same mistakes, you will have the same results. So maybe you should just uh, breathe. Admit that you were wrong. Admit that people around you were wrong. Admit that the theory was wrong. Uh, and uh, so when you when you when you hear, don't give up. 
Oh, follow your dreams. I don't believe that. <laughs> I personally don't believe that. I think that's a buzzword. I think you need to be flexible. Admit that you are wrong. Admit that the theory was wrong. And so instead of, no, no, don't give up. You will succeed. No, no, no. Many people fail. And you need to acknowledge that and change path, grasp, uh, grab the opportunity and be flexible, be skeptical. That That's uh, my final message. But now, and now I sound like an old sage. I'm neither old <laughs> nor sage. But, but, but be skeptical. Anything you read... Let's say a healthy, a healthy skepticism, and I, I don't know what okay. food would necessarily bring you healthy skepticism, but that's probably the, the, the way forwards. And finally, in one word, what piece of advice would you like to give to someone who is considering an online learning course? Oh, do it, do it, do it. You never study enough. It's, so studying, studying and, and learning new things, uh, first of all, keeps you young, and then it's the only thing for humanity to progress. So this course and other courses, do them. They're easy to digest. Again, they're really well designed uh, by experts, updated. So do it. And when you're finished with this one, go to another one. Never stop learning. Never stop. Never stop. Brilliant. Thank you so much, uh, Francesco, for having taken the time to share some of these insights. It was a real privilege to speak with you and a privilege to be able to raise so many questions for you uh, in such a short period of time. And I'm sure there's a lot more to learn in this course. So, Francesco, thank you. Thank you, Jean-Paul, and thank you all for, for listening to me tonight. Join the course and I hope to see you soon, either, either in person or, or through a computer. We will meet again soon. And thanks again for your for, for interest in, the, in this course. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so uh, in order to wrap up, uh, well, let's have a quick look at the uh, Slido poll. Let's see if uh, people are interested. I see that we have a, a score of 8.8 .8 out of 10. So keep uh, keep putting in your answers just so we get a sense of, you know, do, does this format give you a good insights into what you might get to, to learn in this course? Uh, that's always really helpful. Um, bear in mind also that we will be following up uh, with a, a post event uh, survey just to get a sense of, you know, does this format work for you? Do you get good insights uh, on the course? I'd like to really thank you all for joining. Uh, and invite you to stay on the event platform. Uh, you have until 7.30. You can go to the expo area. Uh, there are different booths where you can get further information on the course, further information on all the offering of EIT food in terms of e-learning. So plenty of uh, interesting information there. And we'll gather all of your questions and try and get back to you with answers uh, in, in the coming days too. Okay, so feel free, navigate the platform. And hopefully we'll be seeing you soon at the next episode of All You Can Learn. Safe learning and bye-bye.